Thank you so much for staying with us. Now it's a Wednesday, so we're going to talk all things consumer technology. Now today we're going to be looking at other uses of the pen drive that you never knew existed. Mm. And I've been joined by Philip Kofi Ashong, What's up? head of production here What's at City TV. What's up? How are you doing? Of City Trends. How are you? <laughs> too bad, too bad. Take it time. Take it time. I'm doing fabulous, actually. I'm doing pretty good. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm doing excellent. Good. I'm doing pretty good. good. It's been a very eventful week for me. Okay. Um, and yeah. What have I, you been up to? Uh, let's just say we can't talk about it on All TV. Right. Pen drives. <laughs> <laughs> what is a pen drive? For those of the people, very few percentage of the population actually, might not know what it is. It's, it's very interesting because a lot of people sometimes call it like a USB, whatever, without really understanding what exactly is going on so mm -hmm. basically a pen drive is um a small data storage device okay that just allows you to transfer information or data from one device onto another ah. typically that is what most of us have okay now the usb component of the pen drive however mm -hmm. is is something that people need to understand okay. now typically it's called the universal serial bus that's what usb means yes universal ah. serial bus, bus. It's a term that came out somewhere in the 1900s. Okay. And basically, it's a technology protocol that helps us to standardize connections between computers and peripheral devices. Okay. So when you take, for example, your typical pen drive mm -hmm. that you have in your hand, when you look at the front, you can yeah. see some lines, sometimes some, you know, there's a blue bit of it yes. and things like that. Now, those bits... The things that standardize those little things, things yeah. is basically what a USB is all about. Ah. So I'll just like us to see just a quick photo okay. of the various connections okay. that we have come to know. So, so most of you, I'm sure, have come across one of these in a while. Some of you probably have some of these on your desk. Mm -hmm. Now, some of you might be wondering, so who exactly is in charge and is ensuring that all these connectors and like you know are standardized across yes. that is what the usb is supposed to be doing ah. the usb is just a standardized protocol okay or a technology protocol that standardizes the connections that mm -hmm. we can see there so we have the usb connector there okay. we have the um, the micro usb we have the mini usb we have the lightning we have the usb c there needs to be a protocol that governs so that if Jifa buys a pen drive or Bernard buys a pen drive or Raheem buys a pen drive, there should be a protocol that basically standardizes everything, everything. across, such okay. that when you're using it on device A, I can use on device B and there shouldn't be a problem. Wow. Okay. Good. So basically, it is that which allows all of this to be standardized. Now, okay. USB interface on a pen drive creates an avenue for data transfer. So as you can see that we have so many different types. We have a USB one usb 1.1 usb 2.0 usb 3.0 usb 3.1 these are the forms that it appears in but these are the typical connectors that we have we have the usb c which is like the latest one that everybody's going crazy so, so let me ask you in plain english the first one on the left the usb connector is where you will be connecting to a laptop a laptop all the rest all the rest are the connectors that okay. you connect to your phone. And guys, if you're, if you're confused like me and you have questions for Philip, please don't hesitate to use the hashtag <laughs> Breakfast Daily so and the WhatsApp get your line for us to ask him your questions. So you Go have ahead. your micro USB, you have mm -hmm. your mini USB, and you can see that the connectors are just different. But it's just because of the sort of devices that you would typically connect them with. Now, so that I just wanted to lay that one out for uh -huh. everybody to understand okay. that the USB bit of it is mm -hmm. different from the pen drive. So when someone okay. says a pen drive, you just have to understand that there's a USB component to the so pen drive. So a USB is not a pen drive. A USB is not a pen drive. So we shouldn't the confuse The USB the is the protocol that governs the whole all of the connections and, and, all of that. and things like that. All the connectors okay. that we have. So okay. that is the protocol. Okay. But the pen drive is a device On that basically one. allows you to transfer um, data from one device to, to another. another. But in order for you to do that transfer, you need to connect it to something. Okay. Now there is something that... That's, so you know the mouth... The, the the mouth bit the parts that you connect to the computer itself uh -huh. good the open space here in, 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 for the one we are looking exactly at. Okay. so the whole device is the pen drive okay but then the protocol that allows you to decide okay so i want to connect. put this connector here or this connector there that is what the usb basically ah, is okay. so getting that out of the way 
I mean, we have various types of pen guys. We have they come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. sizes. But one of the things that people often find is that like they go and they are going to pick up like a movie uh -huh. from a friend. Yes, as and we they always spend, do. As we always do, thank you. <laughs> and they spend like 30 minutes waiting for the file to transfer. Mm -hmm. Which sometimes is not the case when somebody else comes to you and sometimes they spend like, well, like five minutes copying the same file. Mm -hmm. And some people wonder like, but What's why? Going on? Like why is, it's because of something they call the reading speed and the writing speed. Okay. Now, if I connect a pen drive to my laptop, mm -hmm there needs to my, my machine needs to read information from the pen drive okay if i'm transferring something onto my computer it basically has to write it onto it okay. or vice versa okay. now the reading and the writing speeds are very very important okay. so if you have a low reading speed or a low writing speed basically if data is being transferred it will be much slower so are these things to look out for when you go out to buy when a, you go out to buy a pen so you don't just look don't at how just pretty it looks and, color and buy it. some cute little one with some flowers on top of it that hangs on your keychain. make sure you pay attention to the right the writing speed and the reading speed writing speed and, and the reading, reading speed. speed sometimes okay. you really don't have a lot of time you can't really focus too much you're kind of busy so just look out for a usb 3.0 it USB has one of the five, the one of the fastest writing and the reading speeds. It's okay. like five gigabyte, gigabits per second. Wow! As compared to a USB 2.0, which has four hundred and eighty megabits per second. So you'll be waiting forever. You'll be waiting forever, exactly. So please look out for that. One of the easiest ways to find is when you go out looking for a pen drive. When you look in the USB portion, mm -hmm. make sure the line there is blue. Okay. Most of the 3.0s are blue. blue. Okay. Yes, there's another USB 3.1 actually, okay. which actually transfers 10 gigabits per second. But wow. I mean, yeah, that's if you can afford it. Okay. But I mean, for now, if you're going to look for a pen drive to use, my advice is always look out for a USB 3.0. It so we'll has have the writing the, the and reading, reading speed speeds you that you need. Okay. If you go for the 1.2, 1.1, 1.0, 2.0 basically you won't have very quick writing speed and you end up spending so much time with a friend trying to just copy one movie which is probably like 1.5 gig yeah so so which that's one is just this for information. one so with this one you can see the blue inside it so typically ah, so three. this this would be like a 3.0 3 .0. 0. Okay. so most important look out on the packaging okay look out on the packaging and make sure that you find yourself a 3.0 to use okay now the reason why I'm laying all of this is because the other uses of the pen drive really depend a lot on, on the, the write speed. and then the reading speed of ah, the drive. So okay. don't just pick up any drive to use for just anything. Just understand that they are different types. Mm -hmm. And of course, so you That's can see the blue. you can see the uh -huh. blue there in the USB bit of yes. it. Yes, so that is what you should be looking out for. the USB bit of the pen drive. And, and make sure you see, see that blue, blue line. If you do see that blue line, of course, I mean, check, make sure you're yeah. buying from like a exactly. proper retailer. Exactly, because all the, just, all the fraudsters watching all, us, all those don't go painting your 1.0 blue now. Walking around <laughs> in the street and stuff like that. Like, just, just buy Let's from a proper retailer okay. so you know you're getting something genuine. But when you go to a proper retailer, please look out for a USB 3.0 to buy because, okay. of course, the date... The writing and the reading speeds are much oh, faster and um, it just make life a little easier for you. Okay. okay, so let's get to some of these other uses. So Nice, but before all of that, I have right. to still remind our list, listeners and viewers, especially viewers, that if you have any questions for Philip Kofia Shong, let us know with the hashtag breakfast daily and the WhatsApp line is 0550585832. All questions related to pen drive and it's many uses that we have no idea of. If you're outside Ghana, country code is plus 233. Brilliant. So, um, <laughs> typically, most people use pen drives and flash drives or USB sticks or memory sticks mm -hmm. to transfer files from one machine to the other. But it can also be used for so many different things. For really? example, you can use your pen drive as a key to your computer. How? So, for example, um, you are the typical person who forgets passwords and things which, like that. Which, which, we, which we, I, we, I do. We, we all do. <laughs> <laughs> and you want some easier way of unlocking your computer. Mm -hmm. When you make your pen drive a key, all you need to do is just slot it into your computer and you basically are unlocking your device. Wow. I mean, there are some things you need to install on it first. There are some um, um, software makers who allow this process to mm -hmm. happen, but that is one way you can use your pen drive. Wow. You can use it as the key 
to, to your, your computer. computer. So you just connect it and basically you have access to it. You take the pen drive out and the device is locked. How do you do that? Though? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's very simple, really. Okay. Like once you install the software on the pen drive, it basically mm -hmm. allows you to set some parameters and you're good to go. And so for me, that's one of the most exciting ways you can use huh. a pen drive. Just connect it to the computer, unlocks, disconnect it. And it's locked. But just make so, sure so it's your if personal you're, If you're computer. in a hostel and you don't like your roommates being on your Sneaking computer when around, you're not around. Just convert your pen drive. Buy one of these cute little pen drives. Just connect it, unlocked, disconnect it, it's locked. But please don't do it to like... Yeah, a public a public computer, computer like no one has the staff to common room computer don't don't, don't do, do that. that just do it with your own personal computer where you keep your personal stuff so that's Ooh. one of the things that you can very easily use a pen drive for drive. now a lot of people um sometimes don't have like a huge machine that you can work with mm -hmm. but then they like to install apps certain apps like messaging apps and things like that uh -huh. they like to play some games for yes. example and then those games will take up a lot of space. Now, that is one other way you can use your pen drive. You can actually ah. install all of that on pen drive. the pen drive yeah. and play literally everything from the pen drive. Nice. It's, it's that simple. So you go, you visit a friend, um, you don't have someone for me to your laptop or your mm -hmm. computer. You just slot in the pen drive and you run everything from the drive. Wow. You run everything from the drive. So you just. You just slot it in and you're good to go. Your you just start playing your game. You start sending your messages. A lot of people use it to install browsers. Okay. Um, so they install the browser onto okay. the flash drive okay. or onto the pen drive. They connect it into the machine and then they are good Is to go. Is there a difference between flash drive and pen drive? Or it's the same thing. Well, a flash drive... A flash drive belongs to a bigger family. I mean, the, okay, names, now I'm the, but it's okay. the, the, the names have been used interchangeably for a while. Wow, okay. But then flash memory is basically the base for which a lot of these pen drives run okay. on. So there's no needle, for example, oh, yeah. reading on a hard disk drive or something. Okay. So yes, they do belong to a sort of different, different family. family. Okay. But then the names have been used interchangeably but for quite a while. Most important thing is put your games on your... If you have, okay. if you want to, you can use it to play your games directly okay. from the pen drive, or you can use it to install browsers and certain apps that wow. you, you you don't necessarily you have, space. you know, or don't want to take space on your computer or you don't have at the moment. You can just install it. So anywhere you go, you, you just can... plug it into a machine and you're good to go. Wow. So for example, you travel to a different country and you want to go to a cafe, uh -huh. but you want to use a particular messaging platform that probably the cafe doesn't have. Mm -hmm. This is a great example. You just plug it in and mm -hmm. then run everything from the pen drive. Okay. When you're done, take it out and you're like you're good to go. So let's say you have an expensive laptop and I have a, a, an affordable laptop and right. you have all these cool things on your laptop, right. but I don't because I don't have enough space. I can just copy all the things I want from your laptop onto my pen drive and still be able to use them on my on my laptop but it's not everything you can run from oh, the other okay. laptop but because remember i mean there's a reason why my computer might be faster than yours okay because of ram speeds and, and all of you know, that, all of that processor speeds and all of that so there are certain things you can't run on your machine but maybe you want to run them on mine Okay. There's a game that is very slow on your computer, but you probably want to play it online. Okay. So you can install the game on the pen drive okay. and then connect it to my computer and play okay. from the pen drive. Nice. You know, so then, I mean, you are not necessarily limited too much just because you don't have the money probably to buy like a high-end computer. Mm -hmm. But you really, really enjoy like a certain video game. So just install it on the pen drive, take okay. it to someone who has a faster computer, and then and play it from time. there. And you're, you're pretty good to go. Ooh. The third one I wanted to look at is um, installing operating systems. Okay. So, um, yes, it is pen drives are typically used to transfer files from one computer to mm -hmm. the other. But, you know, sometimes like a computer crashes or um, there's a problem with um, the, the space where you, you store or you install your operating system. Mm -hmm. And there's a big issue. You can't really get around it. Yeah. That is one of the things that um, a pen drive, you know, comes to the rescue for. Wow. You basically install the operating system onto the pen drive mm -hmm. and you connect it to the computer mm -hmm. and you run the installation or you run the operating system from the pen drive. Wow. You don't need to use your computer's hard drive to run to the operating system. Okay. What that means is that you are basically slaving, as they call it, mm -hmm. the hard drive in the computer so you can fix whatever problem there might be. Yeah. Maybe it's just um, some virus. Maybe it is some... Um, Something has gone wrong with the computer. Mm -hmm. You just probably want to... Um
get some files off the pen drive, off the hard drive of the computer, mm -hmm. so you can store it somewhere else. Mm -hmm. That is one of the best ways to do it. Wow. Install the operating system onto the, the pen, pen drive, drive, connect it to the computer, mm -hmm. run the operating system from the pen drive, and then fix whatever problems you want to fix on mm, the, the computer. computer. So the computer still remains there. It can be a laptop, it can be a desktop, whichever one it is, but then once you connect it, you connect the USB with the operating system on it, you basically are slaving the rest of the computer and you are running the computer from the pen drive wow. so at least you can fix whatever problems there might mm. be or you want to wipe completely the computer you can do all of that from the pen drive a lot of people who have um max for example probably have gone through this experience before mm -hmm. you know so for me for example with with my laptop i basically have partitioned the hard drive okay. so there's one part that has the operating system and there's the other part that keeps my content okay. so in case something, something happens, happens my content is not affected so much and i can easily format you know because the part that has it. because i've separated it now in order for me to be able to do that very easily i'll install the operating system onto the pen drive okay. connect the pen drive to the computer and run everything from um the pen drive That's then cool. i can do a clean swipe or clean um, clean up the part that is messed up, quote mm -hmm. unquote, and then install the operating system again, and I'm good to go. Wow. Yeah. So, I mean, any other uses of I the mean, pen for drive? Me, that we should one know? of the other things that um, a lot of people talk about. I mean, I really don't know if they will allow you to. So, you know, sometimes you're traveling and you don't take all these papers along, mm -hmm. and you want to be like the tech person, like, oh, I'm so walking cool, out without any you know. nothing. One of the things you can do is actually you can scan all your travel documents onto. A pen drive pen and then you can basically hand it to them and then they can access all your travel information would you try that i in mean, I mean in some, <laughs> what in if some, they lose it and then you, you miss your flight <laughs> in some circumstances <laughs> to be cool. but you know you, you never know what sort of situation you're going to find yourself that's in. that's true let's say you've gone to some country and you've lost your passport hmm. imagine you that you have a backup. soft copy you can just literally go to the airport or the foreign embassy wherever and, and then you. basically show them like this these are my documents and like it's all there for you you might not think it's such a big deal but until you get into a situation like that you, you really won't. never know it, 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 you don't typically show up at an airport with a pen drive like yeah, yeah my, my ticket is here. <laughs> open for that twelve. <laughs> That's my no, ticket. No, but I mean, I think, I think, in terms of future. security, yeah. in terms of security, in terms of backup, I think it's a very no. great way to use the like a drive. flash drive. Yeah. I mean, it can be something that's always in your purse, something that really is hidden tiny. somewhere in your bag, but then at least it's always there and it's always a great reference in case something, something should happen to your travel document. So. Wrap up what we've, basically we've for these us. are the four um, other uses, uses that you i mean other people use it for other things depending on their level of expertise our taxi drivers <laughs> yes exactly <laughs> our taxi drivers have a very good use for the pen drive uh, <laughs> music yes they play all their music from it <laughs> But yeah, those are those are the taxi drivers. But I mean, the four that we talked about today, and I just want to reiterate, um, you can unlock and lock your computer with your pen drive. Um, basically, just using it as a key. You can run apps and games from your pen drive. You can install operating systems on your pen drive and basically run it on other computers or whichever one you, you want to use it for. And also, you can basically use it as a storage place for all your travel documents in case your travel documents should get missing. We also touched on the main difference between, for example, a USB and a pen drive and things like that. So you understand where the evolution comes from. So there's a USB, which is acting as basically like a protocol that is covering everything. And you have the pen drive, which is a storage device itself, which allows you to transfer data from one device to another. Thank you Absolutely. very much. Absolutely Philip welcome. Kofi Ashong. Now I do this every week. What did we miss on Saturday? Yes, Central? so yesterday we had a conversation with Haim Gilad. Okay. He is um, Israeli, and he's had over 35 years working experience within the tech wow. ecosystem. Now, the thing about him is he's worked both in the private sector and in the public sector, which gives him a very unique perspective, perspective about what innovation is and how um, the two sectors can basically collaborate. 
And it was very interesting having him talk about what innovation will mean, for example, for this decade. And he had some very straightforward things to tell us. So, for don't, example... Don't tell us. We have to listen to it. So where can okay, we fine. Jifa says I can't tell you. <laughs> so, can you can um, basically check out um, CTFM SoundCloud. You can check out Apple Podcasts. You can check out all these platforms, basically. Any podcast platform, literally. Um, you can just search for City Trends as C-I-T-I-T-R-E-N-D-S. Um, and then just take a listen. It, it will be the latest one on there. I think it was uploaded about 20 minutes ago. So um, you can go and check it out. You might be the first person to listen. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> Philip Kofi Ashok, head of production and host of City Trends. We hope you've enjoyed the show. Make sure you subscribe, like, comment and share with your friends. This is Breakfast Daily on City TV. Join the Breakfast Daily team Monday through Fridays from 7.30 a.m. to 10. Join us for breakfast daily. Only on City TV.